Stellantis continues its electric vehicle expansion with the introduction of the Vauxhall Grandland Electric, the third model on the SDLA medium platform, following the Peugeot E3008 and E5008. While the Grandland is also available with a combustion engine, check our main Vauxhall Grandland review for details. This review focuses on the electric version. The Grandland Electric features the same 73 kilowatt hours nickel manganese cobalt (NMC) battery as the E3008, paired with a 207 brake horsepower front-wheel drive electric motor, offering a WLTP range of up to 325 miles. It supports rapid charging at up to 160 kilowatts, enabling a 10 to 80 percent charge in around 25 minutes. A larger 98 kilowatt hour battery option will be available next year extending the range to an impressive 435 miles. This five-seater SUV competes against a diverse range of rivals, including the Volkswagen ID.4, Renault Scenic E-Tech, MG Z SUV, BMW 91, Mercedes-Benz EQA, Tesla Model Y, and its platform sibling, the E3008. There's no indication of a seven-seater version on the horizon. Fitting into the highly competitive mid-sized SUV category, the Grandland measures 4.65M in length with a 2.78M wheelbase, making it slightly larger than the Renault Scenic or Ford Explorer, but comparable to the ID.4. Design-wise, it's not revolutionary, but the 3D visor front grille stands out, particularly on the GS and Ultimate models, where the illuminated Griffin logo adds a nice touch. The rear Vauxhall script is also illuminated, and all versions come with 19-inch alloy wheels. Though darker colors like the blue seen on the Grandland Hybrid can make the design feel less striking, more vibrant options are available, such as Impact Copper, a retro 70s-like metallic brown that certainly catches the eye. Inside, the Grandland shines with a more ergonomic layout than the E3008, even if it's not quite as visually bold. The dashboard has a clean, minimalist design with horizontal lines enhanced by soft-touch textiles that give it a refined look and feel, which extends throughout the cabin. The center console sits high, creating a sense of separation between the driver and front passenger. It's finished in hard matte plastics, which, while not premium, are still preferable to the glossy piano black surfaces often found in other cars. No constant wiping away fingerprints here. There's some nice design details, too. On the GS and Ultimate models, you'll find a pixel box a wireless phone charging pad discreetly tucked under a glass lid. Tech-wise, the base design model features two 10-inch screens, while higher trims boast a larger 16-inch touchscreen. Customizable home page buttons and physical controls for the air conditioning are practical additions, alongside wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and over-the-air software updates. Although the graphics aren't quite as sharp as what you'd find in Audi or BMW, and there can be some slight lag, this new infotainment system, also featured in the 3008 and 5008, is a significant improvement over previous Stellantis systems. For those who want it, a head-up display is also available. The seats are impressively comfortable and upholstered in 100% recycled materials. Even the manually adjusted seats and lower trims offer adjustable thigh and lumbar support, though it would be nice if they could be lowered a bit more. Space is generous, both in the front and rear. Backseat passengers enjoy ample legroom, solid headroom, a center armrest, and two USB-C charging ports, making it a practical and comfortable space for all. The boot is a very good size. At 550 liters, it's almost up there with the Skoda Enyaq and Tesla Model Y for sheer roominess. Plus, the rear seats are split 40-20-40. There's no frunk, though, so you will have to make do with the underfloor cable storage in the boot. The Grandland Electric has a single 207 brake horsepower electric motor powering its front wheels, making it good for 0 to 62 miles per hour in 9.0 seconds. The bigger battery model coming in 2025 will offer more power and four-wheel drive. That's fairly sedate by the standard of this class. And while the Grandland Electric doesn't feel underpowered when it's only carrying a couple of people, we have a suspicion that it could feel strained when full of people and stuff, or if you decide to utilize the 1,200 kilograms towing limit. Still, 
as long as you avoid eco driving mode, which really neuters the accelerator pedal's response. It feels just fine to breeze along in at lower speeds. It's all perfectly easy to modulate and judge, not to mention pleasantly refined. There are three regenerative braking modes to choose from none of which is quite heavy enough for one pedal driving, but you can toggle through them via the steering wheel paddles, which is useful and straightforward. Hyundai's and Kia's Regan system is still more flexible, but the Grandlands is intuitive and doesn't feel grabby, which is all that most will need or want. There's no official word on bi-directional or vehicle-to-load charging from Vauxhall yet, but other Stellantis brands have said that those things will be coming, so watch this space. Otherwise, charging speeds are up to 160 kilowatts for 10 to 80% charge in 26 minutes, and you get a heat pump as standard to help with winter efficiency. As for real-world range, we managed 3.4 MPKWH on our test drive in northern Denmark, which suggests around 250 miles should be achievable in varied summer running. The Grand Land is very fit for purpose when it comes to ride and handling. Nothing more, nothing less. It gets frequency selective damping as standard, and on 20 inches alloy wheels, it keeps the ride reasonably calm. But it's not without a subtle yet constant fidget over scruffy town surfaces. And while that settles down at higher speeds, it's replaced by a more jarring bump absorption over sharper edge potholes and ruts. Don't get us wrong. It's not as if you drive the grand land down the road thinking blimey. This is uncomfortable. In fact, it's impressively hushed and softly sprung so feels rather likably old school in the way it goes down the road. But the finer ride comfort aspects can reveal how hard the suspension is working to keep the Grandland's mass in check, and the bigger wheels of our top spec test car don't help matters either. The steering is nicely weighted, a touch heavier than in many rivals, and with a slim rim steering wheel that's pleasant to use. You can make it heavier still with the Sport Mode, accessible via a physical button on the console, which is always better than a screen menu, but the Grandland just isn't a car that feels like it warrants a sport mode. The Grandland undercuts a lot of its rivals on list price, especially when you factor in the amount of equipment that it comes with. It makes the E3008 look expensive, even if the longer range Scenic still looks better on purchase price. Mind you, Vauxhall does typically offer really decent PCP finance or leasing costs, so the Grandland may well be a good bet if you pay monthly. A 3 year slash 60 mile warranty with separate coverage of 8 years slash 100 miles for the battery is par for the course with many manufacturers, but seriously underwhelming next to the longer warranties provided by Hyundai, Kia, MG, Peugeot, and Toyota. Overall, the refinement, tech, and space on offer in the Grandland Electric will make it a very serviceable and effective family EV, while list price and monthly costs are very competitive. If you just want a practical, easy-going electric family car, it will tick all the boxes.